Welcome back to the Glasgow Warriors Squadcast, the official podcast of Glasgow Warriors. Thank you for joining us once again and for returning for episode two of season two. I am Craig Wright. I am joined, as always, by Mr. Murphy Walker. How are you, sir? Good, thanks, Craig. How are you? I'm all right. Still basking in Sunday's win? Yeah, good win, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a bit of a surprise, was it? Nah, nah definitely not. Nah, not at all. Um, and we've got line break specialist himself with us today. We do indeed. By by also popular demand, not quite as popular as Seba last week, but by popular demand, Ollie Kebble, how are you? Good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. You've uh, you've got your feet up after your your line break on Sunday. Yeah. How are you feeling? Hammy's a bit stuff still, <laughs> uh, but I've watched the clip back about a thousand times. <laughs> well, it doesn't help that Ryan Wilson's yeah. done his. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's been, it's been sent to me a few times. Actually, one of my mates from down south said I should get uh, Andy Goode's gloves <laughs> that he used to wear. <laughs> nice. Uh, which I don't think would go down too well with Franco. But uh, nah, feel good. Happy with the win. So positive. It's two lane breaks in two games, isn't it? Yeah. That's, uh, that's the new <laughs> Ali <Ollie> Kebble. <laughs> in the shape of my life. Fleet footed. <laughs> um, got a couple of questions for you off the back of that lane break. Um, first of all, what is actually going through your head when you make a lane break like that? Are you working out whether to, to pass it. Does the chip and chase come into your head is where I'm coming with this? Yeah. Um, or are you thinking, I need, I know he wasn't on the pitch at this point, but I need George Horn on my shoulder, for example. Yeah, well, I I said to Wilson after the game, I was thinking about the kick. That was just for content. <laughs> um, You're I'm not brave never, enough to do an Alan ever going to kick in a Glasgow jersey. <laughs> uh, I was As I made the break, I was kind of looking left and right, and then I was transferring the ball uh, from left to right hand, and as I did that, kind of scraped my left thigh, and that's how it dropped out of my hand because uh, I was going to throw the, tw- the twenty meter bridge pass. It would have been okay, spectacular. Yeah. I would have been here for that. Um, but no, nah, what goes through my mind? Shock, horror, <laughs> uh, lots of empty space in front of me, which doesn't usually happen. As forwards, as Murph would know, like always running into brick walls. So it's nice to spread the legs a little bit and get going. My, my follow-up to this is purely based on, I think it was yourself that put it up about the, the game on the weekend, Hugh Jones' comment. Yeah. Today, slippery hippopotamus. Yes. I've had a few Please words. explain. Yeah, that's a new one. <laughs> uh, I've been called many things. Um, most of them not that nice. <laughs> but slippery, Some of them by Murphy. Slippery hippopotamus goes down as one of the worst nicknames I've ever been called. <laughs> and it's caught on. So There we go. <laughs> Uh, I like the white rhino, but yeah. the white rhino is gone, and now I'm the slippery hippopotamus. So feel free to call me that. Evolving, ever evolving. <laughs> it's like the Pokemon of Scottsdale. <laughs> I'm like a butterfly. <laughs> if butterflies evolve, I don't even know. <laughs> but I think the the one thing that possibly has gone under the radar a little bit after your your line break, and I'm going to throw this over to yourself from a, a front row point of view. The very next thing you did is win a scrum penalty. That is the kick to the corner for Gus Fraser's strike. Which, by the way, childhood friend, give us a bit of props for Gus. Yeah, first start, first try. Indeed, it's uh, yeah. I guess has been chomping at the bit, hasn't he? Oh, he had a really good, good preseason as well. He's he been yeah. doing well. Oh, yeah. gassy. Yeah. Right, putting some big shots as well. But again, loves a turnover. The turnover before he, half. I was just saying, I, like he he's puts himself about the park quite a lot, and he's obviously learned from Johnny, Fraz, George, yeah, the hookers we've got here. But how great is it to see somebody like us coming through the ranks and, and taking his chance when he gets it? Yeah, well, that speaking of that turnover, I think it got. Celebrated as if a try yeah. got scored by the Glasgow fans, so that's great seeing Gus come through now. I think this will be his year, kind of thing. Yeah, and we should see him push on. But it's, going been back a, to it's been a good preseason for a lot of guys, I think. Like to see guys getting rewarded for the hard work we've been putting in um, is positive, and obviously on the back of Sunday's result, uh, yeah, I'm buzzing about it. Like everyone's putting their hand up and sort of young and old heads are coming together, which is pretty cool. Which one do you fall into, young or old? Well, I still feel very young, but apparently I'm one of the older players now. So yeah, you have to check my passport. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good that Franco's rewarding boys, yep. regardless if they've got 100 caps or two caps. If you're playing well and training well, you're getting rewarded with game time, and that's exactly what's happening in Gus's case. So. But yeah, going back on the point of Kev's running through and then getting the scrum pen, I just remember looking up at the screen after you got the scrum pen and you're just <laughs> smiling away to yourself. I was actually just raging. So, um, yeah, I've seen the highlight reel already. Just we did we did well in the scrum on the weekend, but like 
that was just pure anger. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, honestly, I said after the game, like, I'll go down as one of the best breaks I've ever made and one of the worst breaks I've ever made. Yeah, all in one. So, uh, yeah, good to get the scrum pin and then score with the, uh, the mall, which credit doesn't go down to me there. That's all of us. Uh, so, yeah, it was all good. It was a perfect sequence in a way. <laughs> it was the perfect sequence, perfect you might sequence. say. Yes! Anyway, on with the squad cast generally. But before we do that, we've got a gate crasher again. Hi. She's finally on the squad cast. This is this Molly. Is a dream come true. Regular listener. Molly, please explain why you're here. It's Murphy's birthday. It is. Well, it's not, to, it's not today, but by but, the time this goes this out, it's Murphy's birthday. This podcast was out on Wednesday and it's Murphy's birthday, so I brought my cupcake. We have cake for Murphy. Thanks. Happy you're birthday. We're not going to sing. Where's my, what's it called? A candle. Yeah. Glasgow Life told us we couldn't set fire to it. <laughs> Just for the record, the cake is sugar free and carb free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also pink props props don't eat cake yeah. <laughs> well thanks thanks very much <laughs> there we go Appreciate molly it. has now been on the squad cast anyway, thanks molly there we go I can't sing horrible voice <laughs> <laughs> anyway cake based delicacies out of the way um for the squad cast episode is murphy tucks in or just likes icing off his finger i'm not sure which one that was um in front of well it's kind of in the middle of the table at the minute is the squad cast hat in the hat there are a number of questions on scraps of paper. Thank you to everybody who submitted their questions on social media during the week. Please keep them coming in because it stops me having to think of questions week in, week out, and it stops us asking the same questions week in, week out. But your job, Ollie Kevill, is to pick them out of there, okay. read them out, and generally entertain the listeners with your answer. Oh, so, so I'll answer the question. You read the question out, and then you answer the question. Have these been filtered for... They have uh, been somewhat filtered. Age reasons. For age for, reasons. I don't want any <laughs> filthy language, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, no, it's all PG-18, that's right. We're good. Yeah. It's a family show, Kevin. Uh All right. From jazz. Mm, the bread <laughs> genre of music. <laughs> Best and worst hairdo at the club. Well, um, I feel like you're probably one of the, the most qualified people to answer this. Yeah. I'd say I've got the longest running blonde streak. So I wouldn't say I've got the best hairdo, but being the most consistent. Uh, I'm really liking all the drop fades and like, is that what you call it? Burst fades, I think it a is. A burst fade. I think that's what's in just that's, there. That's what the young the young people are calling them. Noah's bringing it back in. Murphy, uh, please explain what a burst, burst fade, fade is. The burst fade is what I rate. Uh, it's, it's almost a mullet, but not a mullet. It's like, if you think of like, the burst is like around the ear, so okay. it doesn't go all the way around the back head, just like bursts around the ear. Right. And then fades. Okay, that, but yep. it's it must have been a big thing at the World Cup because... Shuggy, Ollie, Matt Fag. Yeah. Um, a few other boys have got it. So Gregor. all those boys have come back looking really good and I like their hairstyle. But I don't Gregor Brown's got the same hairstyle and I don't like his. Yeah. So <laughs> he's got the worst hair in the club. It's a ginger. Okay. And it's got nothing to do with the colour of his hair. So ha- <laughs> hands down apparently it's Gregor for the worst. Yeah, so like okay. set in cement uh <laughs> in a time capsule underneath the ocean. Gregor Brown, worst hair at the club. Okay, best hairstyle at the club? Uh, if I could go on past hairdos, just off the top of my head, uh, I think it's when, uh, sm- as we call them, little nons, <laughs> Sione, when he had the, the braids. The braids. Was I was going to say ah, dreads, yeah. but the braids. That was, yeah, that was cool. That was yeah. a short-lived one as well. I feel like I could have gone... I think it could have gone longer. I think it's really painful to do that. Oh, yeah. Also, after a game, it got like, ruffled up. And ah. It, there's like strands of hair all poking up this side no, of his head. I do remember it did look pretty cool. And Sioni carried off very well. Yeah, and he played well as well. He so. did, but I mean, yeah. Looked so good, played good. Exactly. Thanks for that question, Jazz. I had a really good time. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> do they know these questions are for me? No. no okay, cool. they might, this everyone might... just asks me all the time about hair. If it oh, no. It's oh, actually go. really good. Okay, go. From Kyla. Uh, best and worst fancy dress ever worn by a teammate which is on topic indeed we've got halloween. halloween party coming up 10 days do you oh. know what you're going as yes i do, do can't, can't spoil it though. keep it a nah. secret can't nah. spoil it there's four of us that's a wee group thing you got to tune in for the next well it was probably yeah it's next week's no 10 days no, i'll be the following two following. weeks well yeah. uh, we'll update you then if you haven't seen it on social media four of us went as average joe's last year i thought yours was very good last year what did you yeah, go as last year? I went as Ricky Bobby last year. Nice. Invested fully in a race suit, which was cool. Nice. Uh, Why do I feel like you already had that? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, maybe. 
Uh, I liked Hugh and Annabelle. They were in as Barbie and Ken yes. before that was cool. Yeah, if you haven't seen this photo of yeah. that particular duo's Halloween costume, it's uh, a work of art. Yeah, that was, that was really impressed by that. But I'd say my favourite by far was Sean Kennedy and Claire. <laughs> uh, when they came as... Alan. Who's from The Hangover. Alan I guess. Alan. Were we really as well as... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> bro- the wee baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> brought Ellis as uh, Carlos from The Hangover, <laughs> which was class. Uh, and worst fancy dress ever was Murray McCallum, without a shadow of a doubt, <laughs> when he came as a morally questionable nun. Uh, <laughs> to it, it was something in leather. No, it was... Uh, what's... What's a Karen? What's, what's oh uh, Nessa? Gavin Nessa, Stacey. yeah. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, because it just came. It came up on my phone the other day. Ah, <laughs> right there. yeah. Look. Oh yeah, no, that's terrifying. Yeah, that's a teaser for the for yeah. those who can't see. Mary McCallum with black lipstick on, not a good look. A if you basically lipstick, black wig yeah. and a leather <laughs> dress with ten out of ten for commitment, but um, ten out of ten for seeing everything on him. So good on him. <laughs> Are you sorted for next week? Uh, yes, but uh, we're not revealing we're going this, are for we? Best dress. So. Oh, <laughs> so, um, just before you skip on again, obviously you talked about Ricky Bob, but you, you are quite good on the whole sort of Halloween fancy dress, general sort of buying into the spirit of things. Is that the best one for you ever, or is that? Uh, no, actually, the year before I had two. Well, you say two costumes. I came as Nacho Libre, but I came as him as the priest for the first part of the evening. Yeah. <laughs> and then changed it to him as the luchador for the second part nice. of the evening, which uh, I thought would be a good idea, but got really cold. Oh uh, yeah, as the night went on. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's there's a reason that film is set in Mexico and not Glasgow and October. Yeah. Uh, so shall we move on? Yes, let's go. We've established that Gregor Brown is the worst hair clip. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah let's double down on that. Just making sure as we go into question three. Don't know who this is from, but who is your first pick? For fantasy rugby from the Glasgow Warriors squad. Now, technically, this is probably from the URC because I stole this question from them because they've just launched a fantasy rugby. So if you feel like going on for a fantasy rugby, uh, yeah, Warrior yeah. Nation, you know where mm. to go. Super boot. Well, um, I'm going to ask Murphy as well. But, I mean, how's it scored? Like, do we want just ultimate try score? Yeah, well, I was going to say if it's off tries, I'm going Seba. Yeah. Or... George Horn. No shout for Johnny Matthews? Yeah, but I feel like there's a lot to it than just tries, so... I feel like George would probably be a safe shout. You get tries, try assists, kicks. And kicks, yeah. All that good sort of stuff. Double Pretty goal. solid. Gog's a good one because he kicks for goal as well. Yeah. Um, Shuggy, maybe. Loads of line breaks. I feel yeah. like these fantasy, like, make your teams and stuff are always heavily loaded against front rowers. Yeah. I was just about, you've actually just stole my next question there from that side, but obviously if you've been involved with the World Cup one or if you've been involved in Fantasy URC in the past, yeah. the night, nice as well in the world because we obviously, we can't play a game without you guys, but f- props don't necessarily get the glory in this regard. Like, do you take this as a personal slight or is this just a, a wrong I've never been in anyone's me? fantasy, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know where to go with this. <laughs> Pete Murchie's just walked past. <laughs> <laughs> and I want that to be clipped and taken out of context. Oh, I really wish all of the listeners could have seen Pete Murchie's face as he walked past that there. That was, um, that's, uh, that's but No, I was going to say, like, if tries and points scored are more heavily in favour of, like, tight five. So, like, let's say we get more points for, like, penalties won at scrum and line out. And then it's double points for a front row to score. Yeah. Because yeah. I only score like once a year. Yeah. And then I'd go Johnny Matthews. True. You scored a few for Glasgow. Uh, yeah. One, almost one a year. Is I it? scored <laughs> seven tries. So. <laughs> yeah. Because it was the one, I remember the one against Zebri here. Yeah. Was that when you got branded the way right now? Yes. Uh, that's uh, someone on commentary. Yeah. There was a Pete Horn who called me that. It could have been Pete Horn who called me that, yes. Yeah. But, but now I'm the slippery hippopotamus. Yeah. So slippery self-branding. Let's get that to the moon via play. I was gonna say, if anybody out there is making t-shirts with slippery hippopotamus, you know where to go. Speak to Ollie Cattle. Um, right, so we've got our picks in. You do. Craig and also, we, just before anyone. we go on, who, would you pick each other? No. No. No, okay. Well, there we go. That's the support. I think of picking a, 
I mean, unless you have to pick a prop. Yeah, I was going to say, you either pick three hookers in the front row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then... We do a good job on the field, but not virtually. Do we edit this? Yes, of course we edit this. Oh, I thought it was <laughs> five from Scotston. From Jazz. Hello, Jazz. <laughs> Round two. Uh, favorite player no longer at the club. Ah, nice uh, little stroll down memory lane for you. I love that question because um, I have many guys I'm still really good friends with. Um, what year is this for you? Seventh, seventh season. So there's probably a good group, good grouping of us that started a wine club when I was in my first season here, but all really tight. Uh, apart from Richie Vernon, who never came, <laughs> and DTH front him over. If you're listening, you were never invited. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. Don't, don't hurt me. Uh, nah. So. Uh, Nick Frisbee, miss him loads. Is it? I mean, I'm assuming this is as a mate, not player yeah, on the yeah, field. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Because we spent more time off the field together than on it. <laughs> uh, Rory Jackson, Ryan Grant, although only got to spend one season really with him. But he's in Glasgow, so see, see him quite a bit. Uh, Pete Horn, but... He's now a coach, so I have, see to, all the time. I have to suck yeah. up to him. Can't be his mate anymore. <laughs> and a uh, guy I missed loads. He used to like really drive standards was Chris Rosaro. Yeah. Uh, so it's always good to see him. Still delivers me the odd box of wine, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, loads of guys I miss. You, you are quite into your wine. I remember we've had this chat before. Yeah. Again, was that something you had from before you got here or was that something through the wine club that you got into what was the uh i brought a bit of enthusiasm over with um with me from back home uh i've got like a level two it's like i think if you get to level five of this pyramid you're an official uh, qualified nice. sommelier oh yeah nice so i've got i'm on level two at the moment so i've got some a little bit of interest in that uh, we saw it. Oh, per post rugby you don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> uh but like also just from back home like there's vineyards all over the place yeah. um so yeah no nah, i can't even remember what the question was most of wine mate, basically yeah murphy how about yourself you've obviously not had the, the seven years with Kevin. yeah i was gonna say there's anyway. not many boys that have moved on yeah. <laughs> um could be a shorter list for you i'd say in terms of leaving such a big hole in the squad mm. rob Rob, yeah, yeah. rob S- salad, um, <laughs> booby probably, salad. Yeah, booby salad. He's probably been the biggest one that we've missed just purely because he's. There's, there's not really anybody like him. Yeah, yeah, he's one of a kind, and there's a few times where he took like myself and Darge out for we go for lunch at a place in Partick, and we'd be there for three hours just <laughs> chatting away, <laughs> having food, and it was always a good laugh. So, and obviously around the park as well. I think Rob's been missed his hard work. He. I mean, he's still got heaps of years left in him, so oh, yeah. he could be back, who knows. Mm-hmm. But um, he's now over in America doing his thing with old glory. So. He is, yeah. Oh, is he coming back? <laughs> oh, watch the space. <laughs> Stay tuned, Squadcast oh. listeners. If we get Rob out at any point, we'll wait. <laughs> right, we'll wrap it up with one more. Ollie, last question. Last question. Right. This one was written on a piece of toilet paper. <laughs> Which teammate is the one who never stops talking on the pitch? Hmm. Now, this can be any way you would like to take it. This can be constructive. Yeah, this no, can be sledging. See, the thing is, there's, pos- there's positives and negatives to that. Um, I think, like, we've got great communicators at the club. You always, like, need your halfbacks kind of running us and telling us piggies where to run. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, like, I'll just say like, obviously we try and keep the voices to a minimum, a minimum. So Stoner gives us a message, obviously our fearless leader, Stoner, also known as Steady Eddie, if <laughs> anyone needs a nickname for him. Uh, He's the man you're trying to beat for Squadcast listeners as well, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, so I'm coming for your record, Stoner. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we usually keep voices to a minimum, so... Stana will have a chat, then we'll have either a defense or an attack leader bring up a point, 
try and just like keep things calm. And then when we're on the, when we're sort of in games and everything's going on, we're all just, it's, it's all about small talk yep. and chatting to each other and keeping each other going and uh, everything's pretty positive. So yeah, I wouldn't like point someone out and say that there's any sort of negative chat on the field. Uh, but it is important that we do communicate. So it's a very underrated skill as well. Like when you're absolutely blown, yeah, yeah. and you're just worried about trying to stay alive and yeah. <laughs> try to speak. Yeah, that's why you won't hear me. I'll be breathing through yeah. a straw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah, it's a very underrated skill which folk don't realize. But half the time, like Gabs and myself, will just be worried about <laughs> breathing in and out of what rather than telling yeah. folk what to do. One man who, who usually comes up as a an answer or in, in conversation or in this question that we probably, well, we definitely need to talk about based on Sunday. Um, George, 100th mm -hmm. appearance. I think it was clocked in 94 seconds it took him to come off the bench and score. Yeah. Again, just give us a bit of a, a chat as to, to what he what he brings to this club and obviously what Sunday meant to him. Oh, I don't think like I could even put it into words like how much he does for this club. Um, I actually <clears throat> like got quite emotional on Sunday when he was talking about it and like he never made it, even after the game, like we were all celebrating his 100th appearance and he never really made it about him. Uh, he was so grateful that, like, the hard work we put in as a team and got the win, you know, like it was never really about him. But he's just such, like, he's already a club legend. Uh, he's a close mate of mine. And, uh, yeah, very, very special guy. Yeah. Murphy? Yeah, I think... I grew up at the same school as George. I remember watching him, he was playing 10, and you could always tell he was going to be unreal. And then he went and did his sevens, and he was unbelievable at sevens, and then he just excelled at 15s in, in the Glasgow shirt and also in the Scotland stage. But yeah, it's amazing seeing George doing so well, and he deserves every single cap, and I think he'll get 100 more. Um, but yeah, he's a massive role model to not only like us, but like the younger boys as well, because he... he works so hard both on and off the field that a lot of folk won't really see it but when it comes to game day you'll see it flourish and uh, yeah like Kev's has said it's, it's, it's hard to put into words how much it means to, well, not only him but to the rest of the boys to see him get his 100th especially after following in the footsteps of Pete yep. um, so it was great and also good seeing Greg giving him the assist Kev's there Captain America yeah <laughs> I remember when I was in my first season in the academy was the last season Greg was here and uh, I remember <laughs> all the stuff about the America <laughs> all the freedom yeah <laughs> that's, uh, as he when he caught that ball and then passed it to to George or did shout freedom <laughs> <laughs> but, but in an American way not a Scottish way <laughs> he's definitely something that's sort of gone under the radar a little bit I think though Greg is he's, he's come in on the, the short term deal and just puts his head on and works. Like you saw, I think you saw that on Sunday, like you said, it's the, it's the touches he brings that oh, probably don't get the, the attention as well. I mean, that that position always, like, never really gets the credit it deserves. Uh, but the shift he put in on the weekend was absolutely unreal. And he's going to be, I mean, he's a great addition to the squad while we've got a couple of injuries and obviously internationals coming back. But he's also just a great bloke to have around the club. Like, I was... I mean, I've been friends with him even though he left, but like it was close to him. I didn't I didn't cut ties when he left to Newcastle. Uh but like yeah, he's a great man and the first scrum session back. You can just hear Keb shouting freedom in America. <laughs> the whole weight of America on your shoulders. <laughs> oh man. I can, I, you know, I can only imagine that and I don't really want to find out for real because being in a scrum session with you boys is not something that's on the top of my radar. Just uh, it's really good for the spine. <laughs> Not so good for the soul, though. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, on that note... It. We love our jobs. <laughs> they do. And you're very good at them as well, mate. May I, I add. But on that note, we will call on into episode two of season two of the Squadcast. Ollie Murphy, thank you very much. Looking ahead to, to Saturday against Connacht and Galway as well. Um, live on via play. If any of you are making the, the trip over to Galway, please feel free to, to give us a shout and get behind your boys. But Ollie, thank you very much. Thank you for making your, your Squadcast debut, despite the fact you said that you would never do it while Murphy Walker was a co-host. 
Uh, yes, that is correct. Well, we've got him there anyway. Uh, Murphy, thank you very much. And I mean, I know it's Tuesday, but happy birthday for tomorrow. Thanks. To tie thank in you. the whole cake thing. I can't say happy birthday to yourself, Warrior Nation, but if it is your birthday, happy birthday for that as well. In the meantime, uh, we will see you next week, next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Uh, make sure you can tune in on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube. But he's been Ollie Kebble, he's been Murphy Walker, I've been Craig Wright, and this has been the Glasgow Warriors Squadcast. Thank you.